Hi all, in this video we will explain how to configure payroll settings. To configure your company payroll settings, you have to click on your company name. Then you have to go to payroll settings. Here you can view all the payroll settings like company profile, configure rules, master creation, location, leave configuration, holidays, salary component creation, everything. First we will start with company profile. In the company profile you have to enter the basic company information like your company name, the state with which your company is registered with and the address city your company phone number pin website mail id and if you want to upload your company logo you have to click on this choose file and then you have to upload a jpg or png format of your logo then once enter the company info here you have to enter the contact information Next, your company registration information like your company incorporation date, corporate identification number, PF related information. If your company is registered with PF, PF number, registration date, signatory person name, signatory designation, signatory father's name. And if your company has same PF for all employees, then you have to enable this PF rules of same for all employees. If you have for few employees restricted PF and for few employees just direct 12% PF on basic, then you can just ignore this one. Next, similarly if you are registered with ESI, then you have to enter all the ESI related information, PT info, IT info, Under IT, you can enter your company PAN number, TAN number, TAN circle and the, these are mandatory fields which you have to enter. Whatever the uh, TAN on PAN entered here, the same it will be get captured for the form 16. And if your company is registered with labor laws, then you have to enter your labor laws information. Once you enter all these details, you have to save the same. Then next one is configure rules. Under this configure rules, you can configure all your payroll related rules as per your company. In this first one is setup rules. Under setup rules, login using. Like if you, once you release the login credentials, if the username should get created with a, the employee's mail id or it should get created with the employee code that you can choose here. And if you want to generate employee code automatically then you have to enable this option generate employee code automatically and here you can configure the code format like what would be the prefix and how the number should start with what would be the suffix and total number of uh, total number that contain your employee code the to total length of your employee code that you have to enter here Next, calculation of basic salary. If you are giving basic salary directly on some percentage on CTC, then you can choose CTC based. Or if you are giving, uh, if each employee has different percentage of basic, different basic, then in such cases to input the amount manually, you can use ad hoc. If it is CTC based, then whatever the percentage that you are in giving, that percentage you have to enter here. If it is ad hoc, you can just leave this percentage next is advanced settings here the first is minimum basic for example if your company has a minimum basic rule like if you want no employee basic should not be less than a particular amount for example if you want no employee basic should not be less than 6500 in such cases you can enter the same over here so while creating a new employee if you try to input basic less than 6500 then it will it will throw an error it will not allow to enter the same if you have any such rules then you can enter the minimum basic amount here next paisley format if you click on this paisley format link 
that you can able to view around 10 to 15 Paisley formats. Whichever format is relevant to you, you can click on that particular format. have to click on whichever format you want to choose you have to view the format then you have to click on ok and then you have to save the same and maximum restricted holidays if your company has an optional holiday policy then whatever the restricted holidays that you want to allow employees to opt in a leave calendar year that number you have to enter here and if you have different locations and restricted holidays different for different locations you can enable location wise cap for restricted holidays then if you have a cutoff policy, cutoff rule, then you have to freeze the same over here. For example, every month 20th or 25th, if you are closing your payroll, then you can choose a day here. So that payroll will consider from whatever the date you are freezing here. For example, if it is payroll being closed every month 20th, your payroll cycle will be 21st of the every month to next month 20th. The payroll calculation will be considered. Again, this cutoff day, whether it should applicable only for at attendance attendance you should get considered till this cutoff day and payroll should happen for entire month then you can choose attendance only or both attendance and payroll should get considered for uh, based on the cutoff day then you have to choose attendance and payroll again if you have different locations and location wise different rules and uh, cutoff day is there then you can enable this option next send auto mail after pay publish once you completed the payroll, you have to publish the payslips for the employees. Immediately after publishing the payslips, if you want to send a common mail to the employees, then you can choose common mail. If you don't want to send any email, then you can choose don't send email. Next, comp of treatment. If you have a comp of policy, like if any employee works on a weekly or for holiday, if you want to provide comp of for the employee, then you can choose the treatment here. Like whether whatever the comp of that been worked by the employee should get set off again a sleep, or they, if you want to end cash to the employee, that you can choose either set off again a sleep or payout. If you want to view both the options, in such cases you can choose both. Then base days. Whatever the base days you are selecting here, based on that only the number of days will be considered for payroll calculation. If you want to process payroll irrespective of the actual days in a month, all month it should be processed for 30 days. In such cases, you can choose 30 here. Or if you want to process for all 31 days, then you can choose 31 days. Or it should go as per the actual days in a month, then you have to choose actual days in a month. Or if you have a different base day mean different working days for every month in such cases you can choose here the base days and you can configure the same month wise you can enter what were the number of working days that should be considered for payroll calculation month wise you can enter in this base days You have to click on this add base days. And here month wise you can enter the number of working days that should be there that you can enter here month wise. And then you have to save. Once entered respect to whatever the working days that you have entered in every month that will be considered for payroll calculation. Next is new joining cutoff day. 
if you want like whoever joining after a particular date for example whoever joining after 29th of every month if you want to include in the next month payroll in such cases you can choose this new joining cutoff day again if it is different for different locations you can enable this new joining cutoff day rule is location wise next employee confirmation on while creating an employee you will get an option for employee enter the employee confirmation month or date based on whatever you choose here if you choose month here you can enter number of months required to confirm if you choose date you can just enter the exactly what is the date that should, uh, confirmation date that you can enter here once you enter all these things you have to click on save and whatever the rules you are configuring here that will be applicable for all employees next here you can be able to view all the add on modules next a major configuration is email setup in this this is a major configuration that you have to do once you configure this then only you'll be able to start all mail communications from the application like here you have to enter from which mail id the login should go that mail id you have to enter here password for the same mail id your outgoing server details your outgoing port and if you want to display any name for this instead of the mail id that you can keep here once you enter all the details you have to click on send test mail this is a man this is one time configuration and the mandatory configuration once you configure this later you can start all mail communications like you can release the login credentials you can mail pay slips to employees or if you want to send any bulk mail that and all you can able to send using this after configuring this email configuration